Hi, this video is to illustrate the movement of the sun in our sky, the celestial sphere. So the screen you are looking at right now needs a little bit of an explanation. Um, I turned on the equatorial grid in the Stellarium software so that you can see the coordinates for our sky, the latitudes and longitudes, except it's called the declination and right ascension. Um, so that's the grid you are seeing. And I turned off the ground so that you can see the sun even when it's uh, below the horizon. That's uh, the kind of thing you can do only with the software. And uh, this green line here is the horizon so that you can see if we should be seeing the sun or not. Um, and finally, this yellow line here is the ecliptic. You can see that the sun and the moon are along the ecliptic. And as you might have guessed, uh, this is uh, super zoomed out. So you have to imagine these grids being on a sphere. Uh, this is the north celestial pole. This is the south celestial pole. What you normally see in the sky would look more like this, but I didn't want to move the camera around. I think that would be too dizzy and even more confusing. So I'll choose this zoom level, which shows the north and south celestial poles. So I think you can kind of imagine what it would look like without the distortion. Okay, so let's look at the sun through one day. So I picked the day of the winter solstice. Um, midday, not that that's all that meaningful. I mainly want you to look at the time and the sunset. So I'm going to let the simulation run, look at this for about 24 hour period, observe where the sun sets, and then we'll go from there. Okay, running the simulation now. What you are seeing here is the rotation of the celestial sphere for a full turn. So that's uh, one full day, and you can see where the sun sets between west and south cardinal points. And where the sun is along the ecliptic does not change all that much over one day. It's uh, at the point of the ecliptic that's at the lowest declination. It's uh, between minus 30 degrees and minus 20 degrees. It's at 23.5 and that's the tilt of the Earth. Now, if you observe the sun carefully, maybe each day it sets, you can see that the location where the sun sets changes from day to day. So on winter solstice, the sun sets at the southernmost part of the western horizon. Let me advance this by a few days, and I'm going to keep this roughly at this time, so that you can see that the location where the sun sets moves a little bit each day. It doesn't move very quickly, so let me advance the days a bit more quickly. And advance a few hours, so that sun is setting again. Now it's setting closer to direct west. In fact, on spring equinox, March 21st, the sun would set directly to the west. So let me set the time to midday again and let the simulation run for another 24 hours or so. By the way, I'm ignoring the whole daylight saving time and the one hour jumps that we'll get from that. I'm just ignoring that. So that's one full day on spring or fall now equinox. Now I want you to notice the location of the sun along the ecliptic. Sun is now right at the point of the ecliptic that crosses the celestial equator. It's at the declination of zero degrees. Okay, let's keep moving.
Notice the sun slowly moving along the ecliptic. Let me advance a few hours. And this is the summer solstice. So at summer solstice, you see the sun in the part of the ecliptic that's northernmost in the celestial sphere. Okay, let's set the time to midday and let the simulation run for another 24 hours or so. So on summer solstice, you see the sun setting in the northernmost part of the horizon. Okay, let's keep going. So as we go past the summer solstice, you see the sun move along the ecliptic in such a way that if you look at the position where the sun is setting, it's uh, now moving southward so that by the time of the autumn uh, fall equinox it will be setting directly to the west so september 21st that's the autumnal equinox let me set the time to midday again and let it run for 24 hours So the remaining quarter of the year will bring us back to the winter solstice. So if I advance the simulation for another three months or so. On summer solstice, if you look at the location where the sun sets, it will once again set at the southernmost part of the horizon. I hope this uh, helps you visualize the movement of the sun in our sky or celestial sphere. This is how some of the world's oldest calendars were developed. By noticing this periodic movement of the sun, the ancient cultures were able to devise the 365-day solar calendars. And this uh, is the motivation for some of the ancient astronomy. Thank you.